that is kind of cool. Now I'm kind of lost. Hmm. No, back in the snow area. Huh. Should have had a compass on me. That's what compass point means. But if I go this direction, I'll take you to like my true spawn or something. Ah, yay! All right. So I'm going to go. Hmm. This way. Go straight this way. Hopefully, I will intersect my other map. Yep, perfect. Very, very nice. Okay. Now I just explore this map. And we're done. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah. Problem is you have to right click your backpack every time you save and exit and then reload. And if you forget, then the, your tools otherwise won't draw from the backpack. So, so I think that's fixed in IC2. One thing about pumpkins is right now they only spawn with map generation and so they're really super rare. Problem of course is in 1.0 you can grow them. And I don't have a problem with that, it's just it's kind of a funny feeling that something goes from super rare to completely farmable. So speaking of 1.0, the one thing I don't like, there are two things so far I don't particularly care for in 1.0, and that's the lighting and the chests. The, um, the lighting, it's just yellowish, and I don't particularly care for it, but then again, if I'm your, if to be honest, I wasn't really caring for the, um, lighting, the smooth lighting. And now I can't live without it, and I didn't particularly care for the cobblestone texture that was changed to 1.7, the current one, but I like it now, and so I figure I'll get used to it. But um, one thing I really don't like is the chests, simply because the chests now occupy a slightly smaller space than before, which means that you can look through the block they occupy and see stuff behind the chests which is fine if you've got nothing back there but for me several of my chests overlap with so like are in my base on one side Ooh, that is nice <laughs> and you know inside the redstone wiring rooms for my gatehouse on the other. Several of my cobblestone chests are like that. And um, and so it's slightly irritating because that area is obviously illuminated and so it's irritating to have the chests illuminated from behind, if that makes any sense. So, you know, I think this area 
is a bit is higher up than that last area I found that was really high up. Because I'm actually going through the cl I'm actually above the cloud on naturally generated terrain. Wow. And I can go even higher. I've got to get over to that tree. Wow. This is the highest I have ever been on naturally generated terrain. That is impressive. Went off the map a bit, though. Alright. This is the closest I can get to flying <laughs> until I get my jetpack. And even then, jetpacks in Industrial Craft 2 are really only good for upwards travel, not lateral travel. And I wish I had noticed that it was about to get dark while I was still up there so I could have slept way up high like that, but oh well. Okay, almost to the corner. Okay, good. I think I'll sleep here. So, as I was saying about the chest, I um I haven't tested it yet because by the time I got it, I'd actually already back or de-upgraded to 1.7.3. But I found a mod called Old Chests that will um restore the chests to what they were. So hopefully that will work. If not, I guess I'll just live with it. But hopefully it'll work and everything will be good. I haven't actually tested it out since because I have to completely reinstall. Well, not completely reinstall, but I mean, go back to um, 1.0, and I'm already I was already on 1.7.3 at that time. So, <laughs> cool. Okay. So almost done. Of course, then I'm gonna have to go all the way across country. To get back to uh, my original base, which I really should name them all, like base one, base two, base three, or something like that. Let's see, I've got main base. I'll have secondary base in the 1.0 area. I have underwater base. I have nether base. I have tons and tons of lag. And then I have the base around the overworld portal that my nether base attaches to. So that's actually on this map. So, several bases. I guess nether base, nether, nether base overworld. Main base, secondary base, underwater base. Yeah, I guess that works. Kind of interesting to me that I don't have a, another portal at my underwater base. Hmm. I think I just went off. I think I went a little too far there. Yeah. The problem is my hand is in front of the map, so I can't see anything in that corner. But I know for a fact that it's already been explored, so that's good. Hey, this is going a lot faster than I thought it would. At the rate I'm going now, it's only going to be two episodes total of exploring. Which means that I'll be up to 1.0 on part 32? Let's see, 30, 31, yeah, 32. So, that's very exciting. 
I wish maps were transparent. Or, I mean, not transparent, translucent. So you could look through them. Hmm. I wonder what the recipe for that would be. Probably a map surrounded by glass. Yeah. That would be a good recipe for a translucent map. Because he took the map, painted it on the glass. <laughs> oh, well. Get around to here, internal corner, good. Then we go this way. Let's see. We go right straight down like this, will work now. Oop. Need to go a little back that way. The problem is it's hard to tell the difference between sand and unexplored area when they're in, in, in terms of pixels, and so it's, you have to be careful not to miss an unexplored area. Sorry. I mean, right into the cacti. <laughs> I mean, obviously, because it's hard to tell when looking at a straight pixel, sorry again, that um, whether it's an unexplored pixel or a sand pixel. So little sand islands in the middle of the water can get kind of tricky to s discern. Ultimately, it doesn't matter too much if the map is 100% accurate because A, there's no 100% explor exploration bonus, and B, what's the, the visual range of the map is not the actual visual range of, well, myself, me, you, whatever. Um, so, because when I cartograph it, it shows that I've explored a little bit farther than it shows on the map, which is fine. I'm not trying for, you know, exact boundaries or anything like that. I'm just trying for about such and such amount of area. So. The, um, cartograph map has a because is a bit more is a lot more detailed because it shows every single pixel. This only shows overall, and I think it's like eight times less detailed is what I heard. I can't remember for certain, but that's the exploration done. So now all I have to do is get back to my main base, as it's now officially called. Although before I do that. Yeah, you know, I guess I've got a bit more time before I have to sleep. I suppose. Mm, no, I won't be able to make it. Wait. I didn't do that. If there was a dog here, it seems to be gone now. All I see is a chicken. I don't even see a sheep anymore. Because obviously a sheep would have had to been here to drop the wool, and a dog would have been here to bite the sheep to get it to drop the wool. Uh, I don't know. Very, very strange. Oh well. I'd like to go this way. Lots of cows. I'm gonna get back over this way. Chickens and. Alright. Nothing interesting. Okay. Ow. Alright. 
Your health is getting pretty low. Just notice that. Here, have a pork chop. It appears to be getting dark, so I think I'm actually going to take a moment and sleep before I do anything else. Way a bit. Maybe get back on the map. I lost my sense of direction there. I was distracted by the pumpkins. Yeah, okay. So I'd like to go this way a little bit. And then down. And then back over. So I just want to explore this area a little bit more. Because from my explore exploration while I was lost. I've got a bit off map, uh, cartograph area on cartograph, and I just want to explore around and get the last little smidgen of it on the map because there's this gap of unexplored area that I'd like to, you know, deal with so that I don't have it before I call it a quits on the exploring. So, now that I've come over this way a little bit, I think we're good. So now, let's see, I think, I'm trying to figure out which way to go now. So now, it's back to base. Let's climb this mountain here. Whoa. Not quite high enough. I wonder if this is the same mountain I climbed earlier. Could be. There we go. This is gorgeous. Now, if only there was a wolf around that I could tame and bring back. <laughs> um. Oh, I bet I know. That's because yeah, I'm like above the sky limit. Let's see. Yeah, I'm I'm well off this map. I'm actually probably closer to the other map. Let's see. The thing is, I don't have my compass directions, so I need to go to that direction. Whoa, whoa. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, well. <laughs> and, um,. that direction. So yeah, alright. This should be good. This will get me back up onto the map. Hopefully. If I go this direction, I'll cut across diagonally and get back up to the explored area. Probably coming up from the corner. Yep. Oh, no, there I am. Actually, so I was way higher than I thought I was, but that's cool. Wait, if I came off the map in that direction, then... Right, okay. Because this map is actually... 
Well, let's just see here. Because I'd really like to understand this. Go off the map. I don't appear on this map. Because this map is up there. I, I'm thinking I should have another map out there just so I know where I am. But I have to go back to my base of materials and go all the way all the way back there. So I probably won't do that. Alright, so I'm going this way, going this way. Yeah, I remember that. I fell down there one time back in the middle of the night. That was not a very fun experience. <laughs> so I'm now off the map. Oh, okay. Totally on the map here. It's a little overhang. So. If I go down, then... I'm going in a diagonal. This should take me back towards my base. Do I go off the edge of the map? Because that will tell me how closely lined up the map edges are. So, right there. So, I'll have to continue in this direction. save and reload. Mm, it still has my arm in front of it, so I can't see. But, um, I suppose what I could do is go back that way, but, eh. I've had enough of exploring. I'll always come back and explore this area later. So, back to base. So I can upgrade to 1.0. Assuming, of course, that I'm going the right direction. Yeah, okay, there I am. Good. Almost there. And then, base tour and upgrade. So, this is going to be fun. I wish I knew what that um, square thing over there was. It's probably something to do with my base, but what exactly? Because you see, it's like. Hmm. Unless, oh, I bet I know what it is. Huh. I was like, no, that would be the wrong side. I should, no, she writes this. I have a quarry set up, which reminds me, I actually forgot to mention, I built three quarries off camera ages ago. Um, part of a future project. But, uh,. Yeah, I built the quarry. I've got it set up, but the problem is quarries and some of the other buildcraft stuff is really, really slow in buildcraft one. So set up is just waiting for me to upgrade so I can power it in industri in buildcraft two, which will make it faster. So that's what that is. I'm guessing it's frame is what I'm seeing. Anyway, so now I have three maps. 
No, don't do that. There. And stay. No, stay. Sit. There we go. It would be cool. A little, I guess, marker or something. So you can mark a block saying, this is where I want you to stay. And that'll be the little dog bed thing. That'd be a cool little addition. Okay. So we have this map. And we have this map. And there's a bit of a gap between them, but they're sort of closely hooked up. And then this map, which is sort of hooked up to this one. I wonder if there are any mods that make that improve maps. That would be good. Okay. So a lot of ink sacks thanks to my unofficial squid farm that I have down in my uh power room. And then this map is my nether map? Yes. So I'll hold on to this. I have some raw, f uh, one raw fish, so I'll cook this really fast. I have some iron ore to macerate. Oh yeah, I was chopping down a whole bunch of more wood, and I was able to fill that chest with rubber, so I'll be good, because that, the reason I have the chest full of rubber is it will give me a lot of flexibility. I won't have to go hunting for rubber trees right off the bat. Yeah, this is... I should probably toss this map so I don't... Well, that's why I actually put it... I put it in there so I wouldn't get confused. Um, I guess the leather can sit there for the moment. Let's see. I have that piece of wool. I still want to know what happens with that. 48 uranium, it's a good number. Up to, as you can see, I've got all these brown mushrooms and only some red mushrooms. So, I really don't know why I have a huge accumulation of mushroom stew, or mushroom stew, <laughs> um, mushrooms. But hey, if I need them, I've got them. These are technically food, so they can go in there. And yeah. Okay, so, one more time, armor stand with nano suit for display purposes, food chest, arrows chest, bones chest, was once dungeon rares, then it was just crazy rares, right now it's sort of like rare stuff that's odds and ends that I don't have a use for, like this stuff, this isn't stuff, this isn't rare, it's hard to think this is rare, this isn't really rare. That's rare, but it's no use. So basically, stuff with no use. Furnaces, which mostly they're for their, mostly they are there for decoration since I don't use them. Workbench. Um, practical stuff. Gold, obsidian, diamonds. Which you'll notice I'm low on diamonds because I built the two quarry, three quarries, two here and one in use. Not actually being used, but um, set up. Generator. I'm not sure why I have a generator. I'll have to, I might have to review the old videos to figure out why I have leftover generator. And then charcoal, wood, a wrench, very useful. Cable obscurators, and a relay, flint and steel, stuff like that. Oh, and the uh, filler. That was useful. And then up here I have mostly organic stuff. Growing stuff, plant stuff. Stuff that's not directly related to food production leather and shears and glowstone and then up there I have rubber hence me being embedded in the ceiling uh, those chests are all with cobblestone 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 this is gravel with a bit of dirt this is cobblestone and some loose stone and then this is dirt okay and then over here we have the two ladders down to the tree farm which is, as you can see, full of trees. Over here I have a food farm, my reed farm, 
my cacti farm and my eventual passive animals farm. In the ceiling, I've got wiring for the room above. And then over here, I have my machine room furnaces. These will become induction furnaces. Crystal chargers, those will probably become MFSUs. Extractors, they won't change. Compressors, they won't change. And macerators, these also won't change. Here I have copper and tin ores because I don't want to have to macerate them because then they'll take up twice as much space. And then a bit of tin dust with a bit of copper and tin if needed because it's this stuff I macerate and smelt on an as needed basis. Here I have iron, which I've already turned into refined iron and then coal, actual coal, and then over here I have some scrap, <laughs> some random scrap, glass, sandstone, sand, and flint, because it's useful stuff, it just doesn't have a real purpose at the moment. Those two red stone torches are hooked to this lever, and they don't actually do anything. The original thought was that this lever would activate or deactivate a pair of macerators, and then the lights would tell me whether they're on or off. Um, the redstone is supposed to be wired to here, to this switch block, and then it goes up, and it would work its way over to there, and, but I never quite got it set up. As it stands, power comes from there, behind this wall, you can also kind of see the gatehouse redstone down there, through this cable with relays, and then sort of goes up here and then down. The default for switch cables in Industrial Craft 1 was to route the power down. And then it goes to these two MFEs. This MFE in the back there then goes to the MFE up there, which is a total of four MFEs before it splits out and goes to the crystal chargers, giving me a total of 240 EU storage, which is more than the nano suit can hold, which I should remind me I should charge my boots. Not that it yeah, you know what, I'm going to hold off on that. There's really no point. Um, and then this charges all the machines, and it splits out. And Since I'm about to change all of this, I'm just going to ignore it. But if you recall, I went through it in great detail back when it was new. That room goes directly... This is the edge of my tree farm. So if I bust through there, it'll take me to my tree farm. And then I've got a bit of access to caves over there. So yeah, I think that's everything. Gatehouse won't change, mob grinder won't change, mine shaft won't change. Oh, that reminds me, future expansion tunnels over here, which is a joke, by the way. Um, I built this. I unfortunately it's always gonna show that, but oh well. Hit the lever, opens the pistons, and then you come over here. This is my enchantment room. That's where I'll put the enchantment table, and then I'll put bookcases all around it. So that's good. I figure it makes sense that it would be near my bedroom, basically, and uh, beh so behind a secure door. So that's good. And then my nether portal's down there. And so yeah. Okay. So next episode, I will be on beta, not beta. Sorry. Next episode, I'll be on Minecraft version 1.0. See you then!